New reporting by TSN says Canada's men's and women's soccer teams have relied on drones to spy on rival teams for years. The allegations are now casting doubt on our previous wins, including the women's gold medal performance at the last Olympics in Tokyo. Meanwhile, women's head coach Bev Priestman has been removed from Team Canada for these games. An assistant coach will lead the team for the remainder of the Olympics so far in Paris. Joining us this morning is Rick Westhead with TSN. And uh, Rick, thanks for being with us this morning. Listen, this your reporting yesterday, Canada Soccer says there are now allegations of Canada using drones against opponents before this was all uncovered at the Olympics. When you dug into this story, what did you find? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. This all kind of came together in the last, uh, you know, 12 to 18 hours uh, after, after we first heard that one of the staffers for Team Canada had been arrested in France after, you know, he he flew a drone over New Zealand's practice for the second time. Uh, people started reaching out to me and, and saying that this was, you know, much more historical than 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 people might think so over the last day I, I talked with with sources who told me that um you know that the men's team has used a drone to spy on the american team before as as, as long ago as 2019 before a game in november 2019 in florida and then you know the, even, even more troubling perhaps in 2021 during the olympics uh that in in tokyo again that the olympics was delayed for a year because of the COVID pandemic um, i was told by a source that one of the coaches on team canada went to two different japanese training sessions that were closed to the public and recorded those in advance of canada's game against japan canada played japan in the first First game of those Olympics, it was a 1-1 tie, and Canada went on to win the gold medal. I'm told that this kind of spying just continued in the months and years ahead, and in fact, no, both, both staff and contractors to Canada Soccer were involved in it and often felt pressured to do this. Felt pressured to do this, it, it, and you know we we got caught, and we got caught at the Olympics. First, we heard that Bev Friesman, uh, the coach, had nothing to do with this. Now we know she's been pulled from the games, along with the original two members of staff, an analyst uh, and assistant coach Joseph Lombardi, who was the one who was caught in France uh, operating the drone. What other consequences could be coming to Canada's soccer programs? Well, good question. You mentioned Joseph Lombardi. I mean, he left France uh, with an eight-month suspended uh, criminal uh, excuse me, yeah. sentence after being charged criminally, right? Uh, where does this go here? We know that Canada Soccer is doing an internal investigation. Excuse me. They've hired a, a, an independent third party to investigate it. But it also raises larger questions about what the government will do. Remember, Canada Soccer is one of the national sport organizations that receives taxpayers' money. This isn't just another pro team spying on a rival. We've seen this before, the New England Patriots. You know, there was a, a story about Spygate, about how the, the, the that in NFL team was spying on opponents. We've seen it in, in the English uh, professional soccer ranks. This is different. This is the Olympics. And it's all about, um, f you know, purity and fair play, et cetera. And, and, and I think that the, the federal government's going to want to take a look at this. You know, I think about the athletes. I was watching some of the interviews yesterday uh, after their win against New Zealand. Of course, this is before the news about their head coach being removed. You know, they said that they're just trying to keep focused on the games. But you've got to wonder, they're walking around the athletes' village. They're doing their uh, practices ahead of Sunday's game and that taint or that smell of cheating or scandal lingers around them how does that affect the rest of the team and do you think they knew good question um how does it affect them it's tough to put ourselves in their shoes, right? I mean, I spoke with Amy Walsh, who uh, is a former national team player for Canada, and she told me she was nauseated. She felt sick to her stomach hearing the reporting that we we had yesterday. Um, you know, it, it's unclear whether players knew about this or if any of them knew on either national team. And we've got to be careful not to rush to conclusions, right? Like, we, mm -hmm. I let the, the facts go where they, they lead us. We were, were very careful and diligent with her reporting. It's vetted. We have, you know, a system of checks for that and uh and and like i said the, the process for canada soccer looking into this this is not a short-term process this is going to take many months what is interesting is you know when a story like this does break often people kind of summon the courage to come forward so i would expect you know my, both myself and i think other media in canada will probably be getting you know more people reaching out with more information about what's been going on uh, canada managed to win against this game in new zealand yesterday uh, and, you know, we took home the gold in Tokyo in the last Olympics. But how 
how does this story and wherever the facts lead, as you say, and our previous victories are potentially affected by these allegations? And, and that's the question, isn't it? You know, we know that New Zealand, before losing to Canada yesterday, had asked the International Olympic Committee to ensure that even if Canada had won, it wouldn't receive any points for that win because from New Zealand's perspective, you know, the game, their Canada had an unfair advantage. They were spying on the on the practices, um, irregardless of whether the Canadian players knew about this. The coaches uh, may have known about it. Uh, we don't know again how many people wound up knowing about this. There's also a larger question of well, what about 2021? That Olympic gold medal that the Canadian women won. What happens to that? And it's a mugs game trying to predict what the International Olympic Committee is going to do with something like this. Uh, you know, there was a press conference being held later this evening. Canada Soccer going to answer some questions. Uh, sorry, in the morning, is going to be answering some questions. And there are a lot of them still about what this means uh, for not only the team. And for this to be happening during the games, Rick, is, you know, I don't, I don't, I know what scandals happening after the games and after wins, but it to, to, for it to be starting before day one of the Olympic Games is quite something. It's it's unfortunate, you know. Uh, the Olympics. I was really. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking. I remember during the pandemic doing an interview with Summer McIntosh when she was 14, and in her family backyard and using, you know, long elastic bands to as, for resistance, practicing her swimming in the family pool because she couldn't get out to the pool where she'd regular train in Etobicoke. And there's so much excitement, you know, around this Canadian team, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, Andre de Grasse or Damian Warner or the, you know. Know, the women's national soccer team or the many of the other teams that deserve to be there and deserve the spotlight um but you know the, the, the story is what it is i'm sure there'll be a lot of attention you know when the actual events do start can't wait to see some of the canadian swimmers in the pool as soon as tomorrow Rick, really quick question given your reporting on this when we look at other uh, potential cheating scandals things like doping for example it's never just one country so when you look at something like spying in soccer you know, you cover sports a lot. Is this something that is limited to one country, do you think? Oh, I don't think so. I think, you know, and this is, I talked to somebody pretty close to Canada soccer who told me, you know, this is widespread. We just got caught. Now, I, you know, I, I made the point, well, would that be good enough if Canadian athletes were doping to say, well, the Russians are, have done it or the Chinese swimmers have done it? No, we hold ourselves to a higher standard, right? And this is not acceptable here. Um, it, it is really interesting Like I, that the same person that I talked to, we spoke about a lot of the paranoia around soccer. There's this assumption that everyone's spying on you. And, you know, he, the person I talked to mentioned that, that in the past that the men's team, when it has traveled, has actually taken an ex intelligence officer with the Mossad with them to, uh, you know, not just try to protect players and staff when they're in, uh, countries in the world that are more dangerous, but also to try to, you know, de detect things like spying. Uh, I was told that it wasn't uncommon that, you know, if Canada went abroad to play that the training venue that they were offered, we would reject that assume because we, there'd be an assumption that it was bugged and that somebody was always watching or listening that we'd go somewhere else. So I, I don't think this is uncommon at all. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, in this case, you know, in a country where you have the Olympics, where there's an intense security perimeter, someone, you know, and it's interesting, there's so many questions that one just comes to mind now as we're talking. To have a drone and operate it and fly it, you have to like register the drone yes. and have your name attached to it. So here we have a case of somebody, you know, even with those rules in place, decide making the decision to put that drone up, and, you know, over secure airspace. Yes. It, very, very lucky that there wasn't some sort of a counterterrorism response to it, actually. Well, and that's why those drone rules were in place in the first place, which is why there was a potential prison sentence attached to flying a drone in that space in the first place. There's a lot of questions still, Rick. I know you're continuing to chase them down. And a reminder to everybody, Canada Soccer is having a media, virtual media availability at 1.45 this afternoon. Interesting timing around the same time as the opening ceremony. Uh, in Paris time, sorry. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in that. Uh, Rick, thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Anne-Marie. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.